Well, as promised, there's the rain. All right, it's that time again, time for another solo overnight in the woods. Everything is soaking wet and it's gonna rain off and on all day and through the evening. So let's get to it. So we're going to continue with this format for now, meaning classroom and then practical application out in the woods because I have my whiteboard, we're in a comfortable environment, you're at your house, I'm sitting right here, a couple of average Joes just BSing, okay? And this video I'm going to change around a little bit. We usually do notifications at the end. I'm going to do some now and I'm going to kick that off with my business card. This will be inside of every single Etsy uh, purchase that you guys make. It has my website right here, corporalaf.com. We have a QR code, uh, my logo, and on the back it's just, you know, OD green and my logo. Um, very simple. If you look at this though, there's a lot of symbolism in it. And I guarantee most won't get it, but some will. Um, we got the black and the red, there's one. We have a camo color QR code, there's two. We have an eggshell, ooh, color with the emblem right there and on the back we have OD green with our logo so I'll leave that to you guys um, you guys can figure it out this is gonna be on there the QR code when you scan that some people are like I ain't scanning that shit well then you're gonna miss out because everybody has to evolve and adapt um, right now I have two people that are interested in helping me on my website. I would like to get everything on my website. So the QR code takes you to that website. I'm actually, I mentioned last week, working on some type of app for a phone. That way you can get notifications directly when a video drops. You can also go there and my affiliate links are there. My Etsy store will be there at some point and you can purchase whatever you want. I talked about logoed merchandise and swag that is coming. I have contacted two or three companies. We're working on some stuff right now, but it's going to take weeks and weeks to get it here. There's also going to be forged goods that I'm working on. I'm not going to give too much away. But my stuff will be different than other people's stuff. So there's no way that anyone can say that I copied somebody or someone or some company. Mine will be mine. And you're going to know it's mine. And it will be stamped as mine. So. Enough said on that. Just look forward to these things. I'm going to try to drop them incrementally. We'll drop this a few weeks, then we're going to drop that, and in a few weeks we'll drop this. And we're kicking it off with the business card, okay? Now, patches are on their way. The Velcro patches. The first run is coming. I'm not going to show you that. It will look something like this, but more badass. And then if that works out, we're going to move into some PVC ones for packs, things like that. Now for today's video, what do I consider as a minimum kit? The minimum, never leave home without it. And I've gotten several questions on this. I've shown gear off and on throughout the past couple weeks and I've told you where to get that gear and I'm still getting the questions. Where do I get your gear? Where do I get that? In the description box of every single video I have has my affiliate links, has my website link, even has my Etsy page link. Go to the description box, it's all right there. Gear links are right there. Now. Minimum kit. Never leave home without it. Okay, and that's going to consist of a whopping five items. All right, so let's kick this off with a tarp. Now the tarp can be something simple like this: a five by seven. It's five foot one way, seven foot the other way. It can also be swapped out for some type of poncho. This is an actual USGI military issued poncho from 1999. And how do I know this? Because I know this. Um, gear of drift is a gift. But something small like this, compact, can fit inside the bottom of a backpack or in a small container in your vehicle. You're going to notice this small kit that we're going to put together can be placed into a backpack or even into a small box in your trunk, truck bed, or under a seat of a car. 
okay? So it's something very small, five by seven, and you should be in business. Steaks. Now that does not mean vampire tent stakes. Most of my videos you see me go out in the woods and I carve tent stakes out. I do that for several reasons. One, because I'm showing you a skill. Second, I'm honing my skills. And third, I don't like carrying sand to the beach. However, if it's an emergency kit and it's a true emergency, it's dumping rain, there's snow, severe weather, you got to cover somebody who's injured, do you want to sit and carve stakes? The answer is going to be no. Now there's titanium stakes, metal stakes, rebar stakes, ABS plastic stakes. The choice is yours. For me, it depends on weight and the options. Metal is metal. The stake will always be a stake, okay? And that's what it's supposed to do. It's going to do its job as a tent stake. You're going to secure the corners of your tarp, okay? Now, we throw ABS plastic in there. A lot of people hate those. That, those things break. But I get a secondary option. A way to start a fire. So you can see the true benefit of carrying an ABS plastic tent stake. And I want to carry a minimum of four of those if this is a true emergency or disaster kit. Several knife options out there. If this is a small condensed kit, I want a pocket knife. And this is a Victor Knox. I believe it's a Ranger Grip. I always confuse the 78 or the 79. Uh, this one is not serrated, so Google that, whichever one it is. I think it's a 79. These are very hard to come by, especially in this OD green color. Most people do not have these. This was actually found in Russia. If you contact the company, I'm sure they can make you one, but they have red, black, even with, uh, wooden handles. It's kind of cool. I don't like serrated because you can't really carve with a serrated blade. Um, serrated blades are meant for like cutting seat belts out and things like that. Uh, being in the woods, this is a three inch blade, three and a half inch blade. So I'm happy with this. We have a large saw on here as well. So again, for a small condensed kit, this can go in my pocket. And I've shown several things with this and I still see it online and people are like, I'll never get rid of my Zippo. Okay, well, most of the options they give us a Zippo is they can fill it up and they can do all these things. Well, if you're in the woods, what are you going to fill it up with? You're not really going to fill it up with anything, okay? And I've shown before that a Zippo will sink, Vic will float. There's also a plastic shell on this that if I wanted to use that to start fire, just like I would with the ABS 10 stake, I can. Um, the wheel, this type of wheel on here, once you remove that child safety lock, you can rescue this lighter immediately, meaning it's wet on the inside and does not light. It just spins around. You can actually blow the water out of it and in seconds have a flame. A Zippo, it's very difficult to do that. Um, and in fact, the insides have to be actually exposed and dried out, that way it will light. Um, there's a lot of problems with Zippos. The number one problem for me, I've already mentioned it, is it will sink to the bottom of a creek or a lake if it falls out of my pocket. Whereas this will float to the top, okay? So pros and cons, but I want the instant gratification, first time every time. Stainless steel bottle, otherwise known as a container. This is a 32 ounce bottle from Self Alliance Outfitters. And this one here is a titanium 32 ounce bottle. It was also from Self Alliance Outfitters, but they no longer carry this due to the pricing, I believe. Um, you know, this is almost double this, so do the math. Most people are going to afford this. And titanium and stainless, it's a container. I don't care. What I wish is a company would come out with one of these, the same size, the same style in stainless steel. Then it would be the same price and this can be carried in my kit. So I always carry one of these in my actual military harness because it fits the old style pouches. But enough of that. This one's available and minimum one quart of water, 32 ounces. I can boil water in this and that is the end all be all. Disinfect water, not purified, disinfect in the woods. The number one way to do it is to boil it. 
and it will eliminate all the viruses, bacteria, protozoas, and parasites. All right, last on our list is cordage. Now, this is paracord. Those that watch my videos, you know that I hate paracord. This is a thing of the past. It's bulky. This is double the size of number 36 bank line. Paracord will also stretch around 250 to 300 pounds before it breaks. Bank line does not. Um, people back in the day, this is all they knew, and they thought this was great for survival. The only time I preach paracord is when I make a uh, quick deploy ridge line, which we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to make one of those for your kit because this is not a true kit unless you have a ridge line that's put together that can go up in a matter of minutes. Okay, so we're going to do that together today, and this is the only time you're going to see me use paracord, and that is it. If you like what you see here, please do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. Then take it a step further, grab your cell phone, download the free YouTube app, and sign in. This will give you push notifications when my new videos drop. Now, how do we get 25 feet from our 100? Simple, if you're at home, in your garage, you get a tape measure, measure it out, cut it, one and done. In the woods, how do we do that? For me, I measured at home, from my chest to my fingertip, it's three foot three, approximately, somewhere in there. I'm gonna round it down to three foot. So taking paracord, and again, it's the only time you're gonna see me using paracord is to create our ridge line. Place the tip in my fingertips, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, what comes next, 24, now all the inches that are in between there were approximately a little over 25 foot, right here. So I'm going to cut this off right here, take out my lighter, we're going to melt the ends. go over, I'm going to lay it down, pull it through, take this end, wrap it around here, and pinch it, pull this one tight, and it should throw itself right over top here. Boom, just like that. Now for one more measurement. Fingertip to my elbow is approximately 18 inches. Taking my bank line, I'm going to measure that right there, and we're going to simply cut it. And I'm going to tie a fisherman's knot and create a loop. Taking both of our ends, we're going to simply tie an overhand knot. I'm going to go around this piece right here. It creates an opening, and then we're going to simply pass this through. And there's our knot. Then we're going to do on this side over here, pass it through, then we're going to pull them tight. Now taking our loop, we're going to create our prusik. All we're going to do here is I'm going to put the knot on its side and I'm going to place the loop inside of itself and I'm going to do that three times. So there's one. We'll open it back up. Place it back through there. Then we'll do it one more time. And once we have that, we'll go ahead and dress this up, meaning make it all aligned. None of these barrels are crossing each other. And we have our prusik that we can slide back and forth across our line. The beauty of this is once we put tension on it, it will bite and lock itself in place. So now we're going to hank the cordage. What we're going to do is we're going to take our prusiks and run them down to our bowlins. There's one, and there's two. Now I'm going to go ahead, and this is how old school I am, Star Trek Spock, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay that 
between my middle fingers there and then using my pinky and my thumb I'm going to figure eight around them until the last three feet of the cordage remain. So that's all we're going to do here is up and around, up and around, doing a figure eight. And we're going to secure it off with a half hitch. All this does is it keeps it from tangling up in a nice neat little package that can be tossed into a backpack or a glove box. And it will always be there when you need it. For a half hitch, all we're going to do is we're just going to go around this, tuck it under, pull it tight. All the gear in my videos can be found in three places. One, my Amazon Influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters the Influencer page. If you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Now you can see the benefits of something this condensed. And this is what I would consider a minimum kit. I'm going out backpacking that day. At a minimum, I want something like this. So if I had to make shelter, I can. It's ready to go. Tent stakes are right there. Ridge line, rapid deploy. I have something that can get water and boil that water to disinfect it. I have a knife that I could do small tasks. And at the very least, you're guaranteed that you're going to be warm that evening. You're guaranteed you're going to be out of the elements and hopefully rescued the next day. Now this kit can even be condensed even more. Even like a poncho that you can smash up to the size of a baseball. Okay, So the sky's the limit with something like this. But at a very minimum, this is what I would carry in a backpack or in my vehicle in a small box back of the trunk under a seat. And at the very least, you'll be okay. So I'll make three more of these loops and we're going to join them one at a time through each grommet hole here in a lark's head knot configuration. So all we're going to do is go inside of it one time and now we have a loop for our tent stake. And now grabbing a stick off the ground all we're going to do is we're going to place a small piece through the loop right there, our bowling loop, and a stick inside then pull it tight. I'm going to go around the tree on this end right here of our cordage. I'm going to twist it, lay it down and pull it towards the tree and that's going to create my slip loop. It's done properly when it comes apart like this. Now we're going to place our tail inside of our slip loop. We're going to pull it towards our tree. From this point we're going to pinch both lines together. I'm going to drape it over now I'm going to take this piece and pull it through and lock it off. I'm going to pass our prusik through there, put a stick right there, and move it to where you want it to be at. Let's go for right there. Small fire right here that he's going to go right inside there and keep you warm. Now, if you planned for inclement weather and you brought something, say, like a poncho to cover your body while you're on your day hike, what is that? It's actually two tarps, correct? So then you can actually take this second one, drape it over top of this, and create a flap or stake it out as well and get a wider area here to block all the wind and the rain.
All right, we got our just cracking egg scramble in the rain using a hundred year old skillet. Double zero today. So that means the Etsy store is open. Once again, the Etsy store is open. This double zero is listed there as well, and I'm eating off of it. So good luck. They're gonna go fast. Go to my description box, click on the Etsy link, and get her done. Hmm. Catch you all in a few. Well, as promised, there's the rain. And yes, I'm underneath here and I'm not getting wet. So somebody always comments on this diamond plow or plow point configuration and they say, you're gonna get wet. But actually I'm not. Um, everything's being funneled off of me. And like I mentioned, in an actual downpour, I can take my poncho, drape it over top of this and create one of those two tunnel tents, hunker inside here and I'll be good to go. So I'm happy with this. Now, ride the storm out, collect some firewood, try to protect it somehow, and we'll have breakfast in the morning. Catch you all later. Yeah, that heat hit me right here. All of it just reflecting off this tarp. Oh man. Catch you all in the morning. Go ahead and talk about this shelter real quick. So simple, it's stupid. Plow point configuration, tied off with two trees, and I got three sides of coverage here. One, two, and the peak is three. You saw that it rained. I was hunkered inside there, deep in the back, and I stayed dry. Small fire like this can reflect off and trap probably 80% of that heat or more. All right, send this bad boy off. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in three places. One, my Amazon influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters influencer page. If you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, I'm going to catch you next time. Now it's time for Corporal's final thoughts. There's beauty in simplicity. Let's think about that. As the acronym KISS goes, keep it simple, stupid, okay? A lot of times we find ourselves as human beings trying to reinvent the already reinvented wheel. And we forget how beautiful things were when they were simple. And we get caught up in our own little mindset or our world that we created where we try to impress ourselves, if that makes sense. Because people are going to gravitate towards what they like, that person's personality, that person's system, that company's logo, that company's way of doing business, um, the old school, where's the beef? Do I want, you know, Burger King or do I want McDonald's? The Pepsi Cola Wars, which one do I prefer? In the end, people are gonna gravitate towards what they've always wanted. Whether or not the logos change, whether or not the flavors change, whether, whether or not the system has changed, people are gonna gravitate towards what they want and in most times, what's simplest, okay? And I bring this back to what I started with. There's beauty in simplicity. Far too often, when we try to reinvent the already reinvented and reinvented wheel, 
we overcomplicate things, we convolute things, we cause problems. We cause the problems that we're trying to fix. And in the end, we wonder why we're frustrated, we're, you know, not making sense of things, getting mad at everybody else for not wanting to be part of it. It's just too much to handle. When you think back, there's beauty in simplicity. Keep it simple, stupid. There's no real question here, it's just my final thoughts. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other.